These are the Parsis of India, Zoroastrians of Iranian origin. From the 8th to 10th centuries, Parsi communities began settling along the coasts of what are today the states of Gujarat and Maharashtra. Today, the Parsis, even though they are a dwindling minority, run successful multinational and multi-billion dollar businesses based in India. So why did the Parsis flee their homelands and migrate to India? To find the answer to this question, let's travel back in time to 7th century Iran. At the time, Iran was ruled by the Zoroastrian Sasanian dynasty. The Sasanian Empire was based in Iran and Iraq, and its territories stretched from the eastern Mediterranean to parts of Arabia and Central Asia. For decades, the Sasanians had been in war with the Christian Byzantine Empire. The war had drained the Sasanians of both wealth and manpower and had made the empire weak. This was when a new threat emerged on the horizon. In the 620s AD, the various nomadic Arab tribes who lived to the south of the Sasanians had become followers of a man who was preaching a new kind of monotheism. This man was none other than Prophet Muhammad. United under a single religious and political ideology, Muhammad had quickly directed these tribes to wage war across the length and breadth of Arabia. By the time of his death in 632 AD, Muhammad ruled most of the Arabian Peninsula. A caliphate was soon established under the first caliph Abu Bakr and the Arabs began their attacks on the Sasanian Empire by 633 AD. The Arab conquest of Iran began in earnest under the second caliph Umar, with short battles taking place in 636 AD. Umar launched a full-scale military campaign into Iran in the year 642 AD and the death blow to the Sasanians came in the Battle of Nahawand the same year. The final Sasanian emperor fled to China, hoping to gain Chinese assistance in his war against the Arabs, but was unsuccessful. As Arab armies overran Iran and Iraq, they engaged in rampant looting and pillaging of cities and enslaving of Zoroastrian women and children. In the conquered regions, the Zoroastrians were given the status of Zimni and subjected to economic exploitation via the jizya tax. Many of the Zoroastrian fire temples were converted to mosques and many libraries in the Sasanian Empire were burnt, resulting in the loss of cultural heritage. In 644 AD, Caliph Umar was assassinated by an Iranian slave due to the ill-treatment and heavy taxation of Iranians by the Arabs. As Uthman became the new Caliph, several Iranian towns rose up in rebellion against Arab rule but they were soon recaptured and punished. Even after these many conflicts, Zoroastrians remained a significant chunk of the population of Iran. However, after the beginning of the 8th century, the persecution of Zoroastrians was renewed on a larger scale. Several Arab tribes had migrated from the Arabian Peninsula and had settled in the newly conquered territories, leading to a demographic shift in terms of both religion and ethnicity. The Zoroastrians were no longer accorded the status of Zimni, but were now known as Kafirs. Their fire temples and sacred sites were demolished. Libraries and the works of Zoroastrian scholars was burnt. Zoroastrians faced discrimination as they were not appointed to garment posts. Arabic became the official language and efforts were made to stamp out the Iranians' own language and scripts. Riots between Muslims and Zoroastrians became common. Even the Iranians who had converted to Islam were not treated equally by the Arabs, as Arabs enjoyed a privileged status in the religion. It was now that Zoroastrians began migrating to India. This story of a systematic religious persecution of Zoroastrians in Iran bears a striking resemblance to not just the history of Hindus, Sikhs, Buddhists and Jains in India, but also to the ongoing events in the country. While the Parsis migrated to India, where will Hindus migrate to?